Hello. Today I want to talk to you about using virtual constructors in your object-oriented programming. Now by that I don't strictly mean virtual constructors, I mean constructors calling virtual functions. And I know I've said before that you can't call virtual functions, and that's still true. But it's true to an extent, so maybe if I show an example I can show you what I mean. But before we get started, remember, click the like button and subscribe to the channel, and then if you click the bell icon you'll know when we release more videos. So let's have a look at the code here. Now I've set up a script to demonstrate this. I've created a class C base and a class C sub 1. And C base, I'm just calling one function in it to do all of the initialization routines. And in C sub 1, I'm inheriting from C base. And I've made the init function virtual because I want to perform a different initialization in C sub 1 to the initialization I'm performing in C base. The init functions are actually almost identical. They're simply printing the name of the function that we're in and the name of the class that's calling that function. Now with a normal virtual function, I would expect that if I created a, an instance of C sub 1 and called the init method, I would get this init method from C sub 1, which will then print in function C sub 1 init and the class name as the heading for the message box. But that doesn't happen. So down here, I have a message box that says I'm testing the new C base, and then I actually do create a new C base, and then a message box testing new C sub 1, and I create the new C sub 1. So we'll run this, and then I can show you what happens. So here's the first message box coming up. We're about to test the new C base. And this message box now is coming up from inside the init function, and as you'd expect, I'm creating a C base class or an object of C base, and it says that I'm in the function C base init, and the heading tells me that I'm in the C base class. So now I'm testing creating the new C sub 1. But it still tells me that I'm in the init for C base from the heading, and I'm in function C base init. And that's it. I never entered this C sub 1 init function. So let me explain why that is. When you create an object in this and almost every other object-oriented language, they are constructed in layers, and the layers begin with the ultimate base class, and then each class that inherits from that is constructed on top of that. So at the point where we call the constructor for C base, the C sub 1 object on top of that layer doesn't even exist, and therefore this init function declared in C sub 1 also doesn't exist. So when I call init here from the constructor of C base, the only init that it knows about is its own init here. So I will always be calling this init function from C base, no matter how far I go down the chain of creating subclasses. So how do we get around that? Because we can, and it's not that difficult. There are two techniques that I see people use quite a lot, and one technique that's quite good. The first technique that people use quite often is simply to insert another call to init here in the subclass. And that's perfectly fine. I do this quite a lot myself. That's fine as long as we don't mind both of the init functions running. So if I ran the test again now, I would see that I get both inits fired from creating the C sub 1. So let's do that. So first we have testing new C base. That still goes to the function in C base init. Now I have testing new C sub 1. And first it's going back to the C base init function. And then it's calling the C sub 1 init. So I'm actually managing to call the init from C sub 1 but I can't avoid with this technique calling the function from C base. And of course, that's fine as long as your initialization functions are just setting some default values in variables. But if they're performing some kind of action you may not want to happen in the base class, and that's why you've overridden it in the subclass, then this isn't the technique to work with. The other technique that I've seen people use is simply to remove this call And then in the code, 
So I'll insert a call to the init function here. So after I've created my C sub 1, I'm going to make a call to init. And because I've removed the init function from the constructor of CBase, I shouldn't see anything happening when I'm doing this construction here. So we'll run that now. Testing new CBase. Nothing happened there as expected. Now we're about to test the new C sub 1 and it correctly goes into the init function for C sub 1. So this technique works, but it relies on the programmer to do two things. And in general, I've found it's hard enough to get people to do one thing correctly. So if you rely on this, there'll be some point where it fails on you. So now I'll show you the technique that I use and prefer in cases where I actually don't want the initialization for the parent class to run. So what I'm going to do here is create a factory function. I've called the function new um, using an uppercase n so that I don't get any conflicts with reserved words um, and new because it's reasonably well understood and because I lack imagination. And this returns a variable of pointer to cbase. The new function itself is very simple. So all the new function does, it creates an object of type pointer to cbase equal sign. It initializes, so it calls the init function for that object, and then it returns the object. Very simple. And now you're probably saying, but to call this function, I actually already need the object of type C base. But if I add the static keyword here, then I can call this function without creating the object first. And I'll show you when we do the test how I do that. I'm going to duplicate that function now in C sub 1. So all I've done to duplicate the function is change the name C base to C sub 1. The init function is already virtual in both and I've already removed the calls to init from both of the constructors. So the change that I need to make here, instead of saying equals new C base, I say C base colon colon new. And this is the syntax for calling a static function of a class without having to create the instance of the object first. So class name colon colon and then the function name. And in my case, I have no arguments for the constructors, but if you did, then you could declare the new function with as many arguments as you would normally need. And I'll do the same for the C sub 1. Let me check to make sure that compiles, and I'll run that, and you'll see what happens. So first we're testing the C base. And we've gone to the correct function. We're inside the class C base in the function C base init. And now we're testing the new C sub 1. And this has gone straight into the class C sub 1 in the function C sub 1 init. So it's completely bypassed the init for C base. And that's because using this technique, we've already fully created the object of type C sub 1. So now all of the virtual functions exist. And when I make this call to obj.init, it's able to call the appropriate virtual function inside that object, and then it just returns the object. So that technique will allow you to create virtual functions at any level you like, and this will correctly call the appropriate virtual function. And if I, for some reason, did want the cbase init to also run, then I can just insert the usual syntax cbase colon colon init here and call it from the initialization of C sub 1. I want to go a little further though, because there is still nothing to prevent me doing something like, I can still do that. Uh, let me just compile. Yes. But I actually want to prevent people from doing this because if they create the object in this way, they won't be running the initialization function. And that's also very simple to do. Here in C sub 1, I simply put protected. And then I'm going to move both the constructor and the init function into that protected space. And if I try to compile now, 
I get an error because I cannot create a new C sub 1. I don't get the error on this line because new being a function of C sub 1 can actually see these constructors. So this works and this doesn't. So in that way now I've prevented a program from accidentally calling the constructor without calling the init. I'm calling the appropriate virtual init function. Just remove that. And I've also hidden the init function here inside protected so that someone doesn't inadvertently reinitialize my object once it's been created. I'm going to do the same for C base just to be consistent. Now everything compiles. I'll just run one final test. Testing the new C base goes into the void C base init and testing C sub 1 goes straight into C sub 1 init. So that very simply is the syntax and the technique that you can use to create virtual functions that can be called appropriately when you create new objects. Some extra tips before I leave you. As I said, there are no arguments in my constructor, and so my new function has none. But if I do want to take arguments in, you would simply add them to the new function. But I recommend don't put any arguments or code inside the constructor itself. That sort of defeats the purpose of having the ability to override it with a virtual init function. All of those will then go to the init function, and it will handle all of the work for initialization. The next tip then, because you do that and these constructors have no arguments, these are simply a default constructor, you might be tempted to leave them out completely, which you can do, uh, and it will compile. Because the default constructors that take no arguments are inserted by default by the compiler. But if you do that, when the compiler inserts these, it makes them public. And I've wanted to move these in here to prevent someone accidentally creating the objects. So by leaving this out completely, C sub 1, I can go back here and that compiles. So you might be tempted to simply ignore those default constructors, but if you really want to hide them, you have to move them into protected because otherwise the compiler simply creates them for you and makes them public. And my third tip, sometimes people like to create factory functions in a library. So like this, you might see some people recommending to create a library of functions like so, called c sub 1 pointer function new sub 1. And this is the same code that I had in my new function inside the class. This works, but in order to do that and compile correctly, I have to again put the constructor and the init function into the public space because this function exists outside the class and if I moved the constructor into the protected space, this function would fail. Let me just show you that. And I get the errors again. And that's specifically why I make those static functions inside the class. Or because then the constructors and the initialization functions can't be called anywhere else. And it does make a nice convenient technique because this is the same then for every one of these that I make with the possible exception of adding more arguments here. It's always class name, colon, colon, new. And of course, if your class would have normally more than one constructor, you can create more than one new function and overload them with different arguments. So that's all I have for you on this topic. I hope you have found this useful. Let me remind you again, click the like button. And if you want to see more of our videos, subscribe and then click the bell icon and you'll receive a notification when we publish the next video. So until next time, thank you for watching.